Hello, this is a quick tutorial video on how to determine the type of bond that occurs between two atoms uh, using their difference in electronegativities. So this is a slide from your notes that shows the three types of bonds that could occur. Um, remember this is all based on electronegativity and so we learned in a previous unit that electronegativity is this tug of war um, and it's a measure of how, how badly you want the electrons in a bond. And so we can have three results in a tug-of-war match, right? So if we're both pulling on these electrons, um, if we're pulling equally, then it's going to be equal sharing of the electrons that are between the two atoms. If one player is slightly stronger, or if one atom is slightly more electronegative, they'll still be playing tug-of-war and sharing, but one atom will be pulling the electrons closer to its side. Um, so that's the second way it could be shared. You could have equal sharing, you could have unequal sharing. Uh, and the third type of bond that could occur is if you have a matchup that's really unfair and you have one atom that's really, really strong or really, really electronegative, in other words, versus an atom that's super, super weak um, or very low electronegativity. In that case, what's going to happen is the more electronegative atom will just completely take the electrons. So they're no longer sharing. And that would be an ionic bond. So that plays out on this slide because we have ionic bonds will occur if the difference in their electronegativities is greater than or equal to 1.7. So if there's a big difference in their skill level of tug or or if there's a big difference in their electronegativity, you're going to have ionic. One of them is just going to take the electrons. Okay. Um, if you have a sharing, there are two types of sharing. So covalent bonds are when you're sharing electrons. If uh, they're unevenly matched, but they're still sharing, they're still close enough where it's a good competition, that's called the polar covalent bond. It's when their difference in electronegativity is between 0.3 and 1.7. And then nonpolar covalent would be if they're like really, really even, evenly matched, and they have very similar electronegativity values, or if they're the same. Um, if their difference is less than or equal to 0.3, then we would consider that a nonpolar covalent bond. Okay. So nonpolar covalent is equal sharing of electrons. You have no charges um, because they're basically holding, sharing the electrons directly in between them. Polar covalent bond is sharing still, but it's unequal, where one atom is pulling it more on their side. And so we use this delta sign to represent a partial charge, represent the polarity. And so we use a delta minus, which means that the atom that's more electronegative is slightly more negative and the other atom is slightly more positive. So it just means a partial charge, so slightly negative, slightly positive. Whereas on ionic bonds, we've learned that since one of the atoms just totally takes the electron, so this is a total loss or gain of electrons, you have full charges. So if chlorine just takes the electrons from sodium, then it's going to have a negative charge and sodium will have a positive charge. Okay. So just keep in mind there's two types of covalent. They're both sharing, but one's equal sharing and one's unequal sharing. So when we use this to figure out problems, you will either be given electronegativity values or you will have to use a table that has electronegativity values written and then you just use these numbers of electronegativity and, and subtract them to find the differences. So in this particular problem from the notes, it gives us the values. So it says to classify each of these bonds as nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. If it's polar covalent, you have to do an extra little step and identify which atom is slightly positive and which is slightly negative to show the polarity. And that's pretty easy, so we'll go through that as well. So um, we're given the first one is Cl and C. So chlorine and carbon are bonded together. We want to figure out what type of bond it is. I've given the um, values here so we can have a quick reference. The numbers underneath are the electronegativity values. So it's basically their tug-of-war ranking, right? So chlorine is a 3.2 carbon is a 2.5. If they don't give you those numbers, you would find those here. Okay, you would look those numbers up on the table. So what we're going to do is you always just start with the larger number. So if we do 3.2, you want to subtract. You want to find the difference. And so if we do that, you can either use your calculator or do some mental math. We get for the first one a difference of 0.7. So that's the difference in electronegativity. That's what the triangle means. The delta means difference. So for this bond, the difference is 0.7. So we just have to find where that falls in the table. So 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7, 
is between these values, so it's going to be a polar covalent bond. And remember, if it's polar covalent, we had to do an extra step and show the polarity. So we need to put these labels, delta plus um, and delta minus, above the atoms to show their partial charges. So it's always easier to remember that you put the partial negative sign above the atom that's more electronegative. So remember, these are electronegativity values. So chlorine is more electronegative, so it's the one that's going to be partially negative. It's pulling the electrons closer to it because it's better at tug of war. So that's going to make it a little bit negative, which is meaning that carbon is going to be partially positive. Okay, so it's always going to be one that's partially negative and one that's partially positive. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one is now chlorine paired with potassium. So again, we're given the electronegativity values. Always start with the bigger number, subtract the smaller number, and here we'll get a difference of 2.4. 3.2, subtract 0 0.8, gives us 2.4. So then we just find where 2.4 fits in on these values here. Well, 2.4 is actually bigger than 1.7. So this is an instance where chlorine is way better at tug of war. It's way more electronegative than its opponent, potassium. So it's just going to rip the electrons away. So this is an ionic bond. And we don't need to write anything else, but what that would look like is chlorine would just take the electron and it would develop a negative charge and then potassium would have a positive charge. The reason we don't write it is because they would have full charges, not these partial charges. Okay. And then the last one, chlorine bonded to chlorine. So it's chlorine playing tug of war against itself. So it's a the most even matchup you could have, 3.2 and 3.2. So you probably already realize that we're going to have an electronegativity difference of zero here. There's no difference. So that is going to be less than 0 0.3, which is called a nonpolar covalent bond, right? which means the sharing is equal. And so again, we wouldn't show polarity because one is not more negative than the other. The electrons are shared equally between them. All right, so there's some examples from your notes about how to differentiate between um, nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, and ionic. So when you get problems like this, you'll want to have you know, on, your, on your test some type of either a table or this little image here to give you the values. Um, just remember to subtract their electronegativities. If you're not given the values in the question, you'll just look them up on a table, right? So pretty, pretty straightforward.